What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some easy off. It's just oven cleaner. And if we look at the directions here, we got sodium hydroxide, which means it's a very strong base. And you want to be safe with this stuff. It's very, very nasty. It'll turn your skin into soap. Um, it, you don't really want to breathe it in. Probably don't only want to use it on aluminum. It's used uh, to clean aluminum for anodizing. You can also use it to remove anodizing. You can use it to remove paint. You can use it to turn oils into soap. And that's how they make soap. You might remember from uh, Fight Club where he puts that powder on, uh, on his hand and he kisses it and he leaves, gets left with these uh, nasty lip marks on his hand. Yeah, so be careful with it. And I'm just gonna leave it on for like five minutes. You can see it's kind of working right now. <coughs> yeah, it's nasty, I'm coughing. So I got a fan going up above me. I'm gonna leave it on for like five minutes. And you don't want to leave it on too long because you might pit the metal a little bit and that would be hard to remove. All right, it's been about five minutes. I'm going to take this brass br bristle brush here. And that, why is it brass? Because I don't really want to scratch my aluminum. Steel is obviously uh, harder than aluminum, so it could scratch. And I'm going to do this for a while and scrub at it and, uh, and do a whole bunch of scrubbing. Yeah. So... Once I'm done with the scrubbing, I'm going to rinse it off with a whole lot of water to uh, take the pH down from like 13 back to closer to 7 through enough dilution and show you guys what it looks like then. Alright, I'm going to rinse it off with a lot of water and then I'm going to brush it with uh, just some soapy water here. Make sure I rinse all the soap off. Okay, now you can kind of see that it's all sort of a uniform, dull, gray color. Shouldn't be really much of any dirt or anything left on it. And that's going to provide a nice surface to paint after some a uh, little bit of light sanding and, and whatnot. All right, let's prep for paint which means getting rid of as many imperfections and loose bits of oxi oxidation and, and stuff as we possibly can and make it as flat and as nice for paint to go on because your paint is only going to look as good as what's underneath it. And if it looks like crap underneath, it's going to look like crap once you paint it. And to achieve this, I've got some various things. You guys can substitute whatever you want, but this is uh, just a stripping pad. I got a green scrubby pad. I have some steel wool. This is grade one. This is finer. I don't know what grade it is, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over all of this and get rid of any loose oxi oxidation stuff I have going on because paint might stick to this, but if it's being barely held on itself, uh, it's just gonna chip off and not be very good. And I got a little spot here. I'm guessing this is from when they uh, when they cast this. There's a little hole here, a little dent that's gonna bother me once I put paint on it. And I just gotta clean it up and uh, get ready for paint. Pretty clean now, and I'm just gonna give it a good, 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 good rinse down. You don't want anything on the top or anything below. The like sanding grits or little bits of wire from our steel wool to get in our engine. It's dry, so what I'm going to do now is I got some uh, isopropyl alcohol, you can use uh, acetone, you know, whatever you want. I'm going to wipe it all down, 
get off any dust that could be there and any oils and whatnot. Look at all this stuff that's coming off. Yeah, that's why I wipe it down. All right, so it's masked off and I just stuffed a rag down the oil filling rack right there. And I'm just gonna, it doesn't seem to matter how much you wipe something off. There's always like some dust or piece of hair or something. It just has to be on there to ruin your day. So I'm gonna take some tape and just kind of go over this thing. Try to pick up any little bit of dust that's still there. It takes a little while or use a bigger piece of tape. Let's talk about my paint choices here. I have engine enamel black and I have high heat primer. I imagine this thing's gonna get pretty hot, but I don't think it's gonna get anywhere near 500 degrees. It's probably not gonna get above 200, but I just decided to go the safe route and just use some high temp paint. Shake, make sure you shake your paint really well and follow the directions on the can. I've spray painted a lot of crap in my life. If you don't shake it really well, like, it'll come out really thick and you get a crappy finish. You get little blobs and stuff, so shake. All right, I'm gonna start with the primer here. And uh, the key here is light, light with your paint. Very, very, very light. We don't want any drips. And if you just keep putting paint on top of wet paint, the top is gonna dry first and it's just gonna crack. And you're gonna be left with a bunch of spider webs all over your stuff. We don't want that. It's been an hour and that's what the uh, can for the primer said to wait. So now I have my black and anything that's gloss, tends to uh, go on a little thicker and has a chance to run compared to a primer. It's more of a flat color. So I want to go even lighter than I did with the primer. I only did uh, three, three coats with the primer. Key here, again, very light. I don't even care if I get it all right now. As you can see, I didn't. All right, second coat time. I'm gonna do this a little more evenly, back and forth. I'm gonna worry about the other side when I can turn it around there. Problem with doing, keeping the can on and doing like more of a solid spray. It goes on thicker. First chance for drips. I don't want that. All right, this is gonna be my last coat with the black here. And it's already looking quite a bit better. Everything is kind of reflecty right now, but I'm gonna get a little more daring with this coat. A little heavier. With my final coat. Because the more you put on, the more it pulls together and looks flat, but also, it's a little risky because you get a drip. Kind of hard painting and talking at the same time and trying to film it. So I'm sorry that some of these shots are probably not looking at anything. And one reason I don't like hanging items is when you set it flat, less likely to drip because it's not all vertical. There's a lot more horizontal surfaces where it's just going to stay where it is. Okay, I think that's it for now.